Hello, Irene. Sarah, hello to you. Hello, Susan. Do you watch on both then? Is that how you know? Um, who else have we got? Um, Ruby Coco. <whistles> no bobbin. To oh, there we are. There we are on YouTube. Jolly good. Um, no bobbin today because it's raining. Bobbin today because it's raining. It's just started raining. So uh, absolutely no way is she going to come outside today. Um, hello, Tracy. Hello, Sylvia. Hello, Linda. And Julie Jones. Hello to you too. Hi, Laura. Um, Hi Joe. Glenis, hello. Received parcel today. Many thanks. Jolly good. <gasps> Sally's got a pink parcel today too. Um, hi Shelley. Sharon, hello to you. Got new fabrics which are going on as we speak. So Kim's actually sitting there putting new fabrics on. So I'm going to give her a minute just to get those uploaded. Hello Delia in California. Shall we do a where in the world are you? Um, Jane's in the Gulf of Mexico. Hi Cherry. Hi Joan. So, not, oh, hello in Spain is Claire. Um, have we got anyone in Australia yet? Have we got any, anyone in, at anywhere else? We have, um, oh, who's in India? Um, can't remember your name, sorry. Uh, Rob is in Scotland. Um, we're Wednesday, aren't we? So, we get, yeah, because we, we normally get Brian in, um, where's Brian? Ohio and Brenda in Kentucky. And Nancy in Colorado and Rita in New York. Betty's in New York too. Maybe you know Rita. You could be neighbours. You never know. Um, Chilling Kingsland. Yeah, it's not nice here. Oh, hi, Rita. Hello, Ruby. Um, Wiltshire. Oh, Maureen's in Australia. Susan's in Australia. You could get together. It's a small place. Um, Susan's in Missouri. Um, Sharon got a pink parcel in Northern Ireland. We're starting to send out parcels to um, uh, old Texas. Oh, snowy in Texas. Diane's in Massachusetts. Um, what was that? My son-in-law was on BBC yesterday talking about blind ice hockey in the UK. Oh, how exciting! Anne's in Canada. Kim is in Montana. We're all over the place. Kathy's in Illinois. I thought we would use the suede on the website for the mouse. Would that work? That would look very nice. Do a small stitch because it might fray a bit, but that would be very nice. We do have actually the um, the plush fleece back in stock again. We've got mink and we've got the rose back in stock. Those have been really, really busy. Oh, Pippa's caught alive at last. Jolly good. What was I on about? I'm doing it again, aren't I? Lose, losing my thread, which is an appropriate thing to lose when you're in this kind of business. Um, snowing in Iowa. Um, sunny just now in Dumfries. Oh, yeah, postage. Um, because Royal Mail had a cyber attack on parcels going internationally, um, we had quite a backlog. In fact, there is a backlog of parcels at the post office that are still trying to get through. They're still not accepting parcels, as far as I'm aware. Um, so for International Post, and that would be Northern and Southern Ireland, um, we're going to use Every, which is around about the same price, um, but they're tracked. So it might be a better service if they if they can pull it off. So Rita, you've got two parcels coming over with every. Nancy, if you're watching, you've got one coming over with every. Um, so uh, Cindy is in America. She's ordered with every. And Janet, yours will be with every as well. So um, so let me know. Let me know what the, what the delivery is like, because we've not used them before. So it'd be interesting to know what, what you think and if they get there in time and everything. Um, I've got pixelation here, but I have frozen. So I don't know what's going on there. I might disconnect that, actually. Um, hello, Linda. And Lisa's in New Mexico. Hello. Sunny in Lan uh, Lanarkshire. Nice. It has been sunny, but so cold. So cold. Which colour thread did you use for clothing, black or brown? I think I used black on that, Willow. Um, Pixelate in here too. I've just uh, because um, YouTube disappeared, I reconnected it, and I think I might have connected it twice. So I've just disconnected one of them. So hopefully that will um, that will address the issue on YouTube. Vicky, haven't see, received your Matthew. All of those should go. Have you, if you'd ordered it from me, they've all gone out now. Could you email me on the website? It's um, 
enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com. The email address will be on the website if you didn't take note of that. Um, just drop me an email and let me know when you ordered it and I'll make sure that we'll chase that one up for you. Um, foggy and cold in Shaftesbury. We haven't got the fog yet. Every very good for delivering. I hope so, Anne. They, they got a bit of a bad press recently, didn't they? But um, yeah, I, I th oh, good, Rita. Oh, Rita, I didn't, I didn't do the captions, did I? I don't suppose I can do it now, can I? Oh, fancy forgetting that. Every week, and then Rita says your captions were off. And then I say, I'll do it next time. And then I don't, I don't know I can do it now. Crump crumpets and butter, Grace. Where did that come from? Um, I spy on the table Madison bag fabric. You do, you do. Who was it to ask for this? I had an email from somebody, I'm sorry I can't remember, saying, will you be getting the fabric? Let's show you these fabrics. Hopefully beyond there now. Um, will we be getting the fabric that we use for the Madison bag? And yes, we will, and yes, we have. Let me just have a look. Um, let's go to the shop. Let's go to the shop. Um, where are we? So they'll be under new arrivals. So if you just go into menu, new arrivals, and again, she's busy in herself um, at the moment. Yes, there it is. It's, um, it's a soft canvas, black floral it's called. It's seven pounds for half a metre, but it does come in um, one piece if you order more than one. Um, Carol, not yet, not all of them, they've just started going out. Um, they were due in today and we did get a few, but the majority of them are going to arrive tomorrow, so they'll be going out tomorrow if that's okay. Um, every have improved since Christmas. Oh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad about that. So you're looking at prices because I did take your advice and we had a look at DHL and I think DHL to ship to the States was £140 um, for a small under one kilogram parcel and then we had a look on, I can't remember who else, somebody else was £50, parcel force was about £55. Ridiculous! So every round about the same as Royal Mail so, um, so that's why we decided to go to them because we don't want to lose you international people. Um, Karen's going to do a catch up later. There's no subtitles. Can I, do, can I do anything while we're live? Let me have a look. I don't think I can. Engage with your audience. Add, no, I don't want to add reactions. Oh, Rita. You're going to have to email me before I go live next time. What's that one? Manage. No. No, that's going to end the live stream. Don't want to expand the menu. I sh I'll do it for next time. Sorry. <laughs> Rita, she's going to email me next time. Captions on. Deborah, captions on. Um. Oh, Sarah. Because you had one not turn up, didn't you? It was the Maddie and the, um, the wreath. So I sent out another one and then they both arrived. Oh, well. I'll send you a stamped addressed envelope if you don't mind sticking it back in the post. Um, have the white pot in the Madison bag kit. I'm very excited. Lovely. So yes, brand new today and it's a canvas but it's a nice soft canvas. So if you're doing homewares, cushion covers, covering chairs, curtains, that kind of thing would look lovely but for bags definitely. So if you wanted to make an extra Madison, we do have some Madison frames coming in. Um, not the chains, they'll have swivel snaps with them in gunmetal grey. So hopefully they'll be on in the next couple of days. Um, hello in South Africa, is Marion. Hello. Okay, right. We were, I think it was Leslie, you know we brought you the um, Ponte de Roma um, jerseys that says, can you get any different colours? Well, guess what we did? We, we got different colours for you. So the Ponte jersey, is a double knit so it's heavier um, than the regular jersey so it's a really nice solid fabric um, that doesn't go see-through when it's stretched because it's a really nice weight so it's beautiful quality and let's move those out the way because I'll show you them in a bit and we've got all of these colors for you so there's black and navy by the way this is what it looks like when it comes 
like the first piece that comes off the roll. So if you get the first piece, please don't think it's our chopping that's not very good. That's actually how it, uh, how it ends up. Um, that one's the same look. Hmm, shoddy. And then there's a burgundy. I'm not sure if you're actually calling it burgundy. Uh, plum, that one. And there's a navy. Oh, Francesca, that sounds painful. Oh, I hope you're all right. And we're calling that one. Oh, that one's not on there yet. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. That's like a denim colour. And then there's a grey, which is a mauve grey, which is really lovely. So those are the new colours in the Ponte. And remember, this is a little bit heavier. It's a, it's a double knit instead of a single knit. So they would make lovely leggings, Rita, yes. What type of stitching to use when stitching jersey? If you have a lightning stitch on your sewing machine, which is like a long, thin zigzag like that, that's the one that I prefer because it's quite quick. Um, there are back stitches or triple straight stitches, which is like three dashed lines. Um, that tends to use a lot of thread and it's quite time consuming because your, your, your thread, your stitch will go one back, two forward, one back, two forward, which does enable it to stretch, but it's, it takes a long time to do that stitch. So I tend to use the lightning. Um, yes, Sally Ann, absolutely back wing top. Yes, that'd be fabulous. And if you don't have either of those stitches, then use a zigzag, but make it, in, instead of like that, make it narrow and quite short. So it looks almost like a stretch, um, a straight stitch, but it will have that little bit of stretch in it. And oh, it says use Maraflex thread. Yes, that that would work well. Um, but that would make a nice back wing top. Nice, you have two colours actually. So if you've got a black with maybe a grey round the uh, round the collar and the cuffs, around the neckline and the cuffs, that would look nice. Turn sound off and captions appear. Was oh, that on Facebook? Um, all on there now. Oh, they're all on there now. Oh, yes, we do have the Valentine's fabric back in stock again. Do you remember um, when we did the this one? So the String of Hearts and Be My Valentine, as in B W E. Um, we've got those back in stock, so those have just gone on today as well. Thank you, Chimbers. Um, yes, that would look nice with two colours. And I'll tell you what, two colours would look very nice together. How about these. This is a jersey again. It's not a double knit, but it feels like it. I did get him to, to check on that one. This is so pretty. So a bat wing top for the summer. Gorgeous. And again, it's lovely, lovely quality. And what we're calling it. Let's have a look. That one is striped floral. So it's a cotton mix. And then we have blush leaves. And they kind of match. They go really nicely together. This one I have my A on because I think that would make a really lovely batwing top. I'm, I'm very, very fond of that one. But this one, I'm thinking maybe with jeans or um, like white cropped trousers. White, white cropped linen trousers is what I'd like to be wearing because the weather demands white cropped linen trousers. But wouldn't that be nice in the summer? Um, hi, Megan. Christine's at work, going to catch up later. Overlocker, definitely, Sarah, if you have one. Not everybody's got one, but definitely I'd use an overlocker for that one. Um, haven't been to a live in ages. Welcome back, Colette. How can I get a muddy book if yours have all gone, says Linda? Ours haven't all gone. We've still got them in stock. But if you don't want to shop with us, you can go directly to Search Press. Use the code DD105 for your 20% discount or Amazon. Amazon has still got them. Um, which side do the stripes go? They are horizontal, Rosina, but really, let me see how stretchy this is. It stretches in both directions, so you could have it any way you like. If you prefer them vertical, then do them vertical. It's not going to make any difference um, to your project if you do that. So, Christine's been listening while sewing. Huh? Jane's got a pink parcel. 
Tracy, the thread that Rita recommended, I can't remember what it's called now, Rita. Just go back again. Mariflex um, would work. Um, or just polyester. Polyester thread will be fine. Or a universal thread, like um, a Gutman all-in-one, because that is a... It's either a cotton core with polyester wrapped around it or a polyester core with cotton wrapped around it. I can't remember which way is which. Um, yeah, I don't, it's not been released over there yet, Christine, so it might be a while. I don't know what date it gives you in, um, in Canada, but uh, they haven't actually come over. They haven't been sent over yet, so it might be a little while. Uh, hello, Genevieve in Switzerland, sewing and live for the very first time. Welcome along. Um, we have a bag mouse. Do we? I can't say. Oh, we do have a bag mouse. <laughs> I'm sewing some plain card holders made from old CDs. That's a good idea. Mariflex is a stretch thread, but you use it like normal thread. You can sew stretch fabrics with a straight stitch. Oh, didn't know that, Rita. I'll have to have a look for that one. Um, hello, Jocelyn in Canada again, in Saskatoon. Um, it is, oh, we're not, we're not making some, I'm still getting carried away with this chenilling business, so I just thought I'd show you another technique. So Wednesdays we tend to do a technique, not, not necessarily making a project, so, so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. So, should we do it, actually? Might be quite a short one today, where are we? About quarter past. Um, Zoe's making Maddie. <laughs> nice. So, I'm not going to make up the whole bag. But I thought this might be quite nice on the front of a box or a gift bag or something like that because I'm still thinking hots and I'm still thinking chenilling because um, I, I think <laughs> I tend to get a little bit obsessed, but not obsessed, but once I start doing something I really enjoy it. I want every project to have it on. So this is something that you can make on a, um, on a quilt block or you could um, I'd obviously put it on bags and things like that, but even on the front of a t-shirt, something like that would be a nice idea. Thank you, Helene. We might, we might just have Lisa along today. Um, she's, she says there's not enough hours in the day at the moment. She's just been really busy. Um, Sharon's loving making outfits for the kids, Maddie and Robin. <laughs> um, making Maddie's teddy. Nice. Oh, Juliet. First time joining us live. That's nice. Um, welcome along again. Who else is here for the first time? Come and let us know who else is here for the very first time never joined us before. Or maybe you've never commented before. Be nice to um be nice to hear from you. Um Hello Pasco, where are you? The Crafty Gardening Times. Hello, hello Crafty Gardening Times. I do try and remember your names. Um uh, I don't I don't always get them right. I call everybody Joe. Um Made my granddaughter a chenille pink hot pillow when she was three for Valentine's. Oh, she still uses it when she's eight. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Juliet's from Indonesia. Oh, lovely. Welcome along. Um, Linda's making an A5 video. Oh, wanted to have a, a quick chat about Block of the Month. And yes, we do have um, kits still available. Hello, Princess Morning Star. Barbara in California. First time. Hello. Um, first time oh, watching. Now then, this is the... Half Yard Sewing Club Block of the Month. Putting the waistband on a Civil War skirt. Ooh. Take news today, Cathy. Still chenilling. Um, hello, Rose inside. Oh, Corpus Christi. Oh, wow. Thank you for sharing knowledge. Thank you. Welcome along. Hi, Leanna. Just joined up in January. Jenny's enjoying the Half Yard Club. Lovely. <laughs> Trying to put together the call to the go for the two panels I have done. Um, I've made a video. I've only just finished filming it, so I need to edit it. It's going to be too late to get it over to the girls today to put it on the website. But I'm going to ask Claire if she'll put it on tomorrow. So I've made a video of how to make these up. I didn't, where is it? I didn't actually quilt the block. So I just made it with that for the top and that for the bottom. But I think you get the idea because it's, it's all about the sashing um, and how to join that together. So it's... For your first month, you'll have made two, and you'll have made two blocks that look like that. And we weren't going to join them all together till later on in the year, because it's a quilt as you go. You're not going to get your final block until December. Um, 
so there's no point in putting it all together, we thought, but you wanted to get going on it. So we've given you the instructions already on how to put the first three together, uh, sorry, the first blocks together. And it'll be kind of those. Sorry, just put myself out of vision again. So that's your block. And then there's the three triangles and your sashing. So not the bit across the bottom. It'll just be that that we're making up in the video because that's all you can do at the moment anyway because you've only got the one block. That Well, you've got two. The other one's on the other end of the of the quilt. So be able to do this twice with your, um, with your kit so far. And then the next row you won't put together until you've done the next three. So that'll be February, March and April. I don't know if those are February, March and April because I might have this the wrong way around. Um, but you'll have three blocks and then we'll join the top one to the bottom one and do these cornerstones. So that they, so if you want to do this one now, that's fine. And then we'll do the next one in April. If you wanted to leave the whole lot until the end of the year and do it all in one go, then you can do that. You could start it halfway through the year. So, But there's, there's no rush to do it. And all of the blocks are quilted individually as you go because it's a quilt as you go. So there's no putting the whole thing under the sewing machine. Frozen in, a, in an attractive position, not one of those ones. <laughs> Frozen on Facebook as well, how strange. We're back again. Um, keep freezing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is because everything's fine from this end. So I'm um, sorry about that. Don't know what to do. Sewing Room Secrets quoting a machine sewing at half price. Oh, it will never be rich as, as authors, you know. <laughs> anyway, where's the bits to do this with? I've lost them now. I've wafted things about by getting my quilt out. And I've wafted them into the bin, can you believe? Okay, so another method of chenilling. So the one that we did the other day was, oh, wafted on the floor. That was the one where we cut into the fabric. So you can have a look back at the videos um, for that one. A clover slash cutter. Yeah, I, I, I like those, but I, I found that they, um, the blades blunted really quickly. But it does separate the fabrics so that you're not going to cut through the bottom one. So that's, um, that's a good idea. Um, Right, so with this one, we're going to add like ribbons to it. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, but we're going we're gonna to do it anyway because I haven't done it for a while. I, I, I enjoy doing it. So there. So I've still got the same heart template as the other day, actually. So it doesn't have to be a heart. We can do any shape we like. I just like hearts. It might be a nice idea as well to actually put a piece of applique on here so that your heart is a different colour to the outside of the fabric. Um, oh, I could do that actually if I had a bit of fabric. Should we do it? Oh, we rude not to, wouldn't it? Okay, so I've got that. I'm just going to switch the iron on because I don't like working with crease fabric. And I don't know what I've done with my little ironing mat. But I've got a spare bit of bosal I'm going to use instead. And while I'm here, just wonder if I've got any heat and bond. That's not heat and bond. Do excuse me for just a moment while I rummage through my drawers. Yes, I've got some heat and bond. Amazing what you find. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this. Can you tell? Um, scissors. Leanne, I'm just doing a little bit of chenilling, Leanna, so I'm not actually making anything. Um, we could maybe make something with it on Saturday, if it turns out all right. Um, Susan was very pleased with the result last time. I think you dropped your mic when you're showing the quilt, so you keep going in and out with your speech. Oh, sorry. Uh, Gary's put away. It, it may, it may well have done. It does tend to tidy up after me. Right. So we're going to put a piece of a, a piece of applique on here, which wasn't the plan, but there you go. So 
so I've got just about the right size of um, heat and bond. Never throw those bits away, they always come in useful, don't they? So let's iron that in there. Oh, I don't want steam, thank you. So just iron that on the back of there. I think the glue is separating a little bit, so it's quite an old one, but maybe it'll be fine, it'll work. Um, that will do. Then I'm going to cut the heart shape out of this. Bobbin had a lovely birthday, thanks, Leanne. Um, yeah, she's six now, she's getting old. Jen says, I love your spur of the moment plans. Oh, I know, I change my mind all the time. Um, no, I've still got the heart. <coughs> still got the heart. I'm just waiting for this to cool down a bit because I'm using a heat erasable pen, which if you tend to draw on it on something warm, it um, being disappears straight away. So let's draw around here. So has anybody made up their Maddy Caddies yet? I'd love to see your pictures if you have. Hello, Chris Anne in New Orleans. Right, so let's just cut this out. Oh, those muddy panels, um, again, I did say earlier on, but we're expecting a whole new lot of them in tomorrow. So I've taken the pre-order description off the website because they'll be going out tomorrow. So um, if you wanted to order those, I don't think we'll get any more after those have gone. So I've been waiting for them, then they'll be there tomorrow. Um... Megan's nearly finished hers. Tracy's having trouble with Muddy's face. What's the problem with Muddy's face? How are you doing it? Windy and Paxos. <laughs> Mary says, I love it when you change your plan. I always do. I always do. There was, you start off thinking, right, I'll do that, but then I'll get a better idea. Right, so that's just going to go on the front of there. Uh, I'm thinking a, a storage box, which is why I've got that kind of size. I don't know whether that's what it's going to end up being, but that's what I had in mind. Um, right, so, yeah, that's well and truly stuck. Do not seem to embroider it very good? Keep practising, Tracy. Take your time with it. Use tiny stitches. Um, if you have a look on the original Maddie on the Half Yard Club website, um, it was a while ago when I did that, but I'm, I'm sure I embroidered the face on there, which may help you. When you wrap the wool for Maddie's hair, what size of cardboard did you use? A4, that way round, so the long way round. And then just cut across one end so it's twice the length of A4. And enjoy the magic Yes, Irene, we do have them. I just haven't got them on the website yet. So hopefully they'll be going on tomorrow. OK, then we do this. So I've got strips of fabric that are cut on the bias. It's important that these are cut on the bias, not on the straight. Because if you cut them on the straight of grain and then try and fray them, they will fray like mud and they'll look really scruffy. Um, and we're going around a corner as well. We're, we're curving this around here, so they need to be on the bias so that they'll stretch. Um, with, with bias cut fabric, so that's cutting at a 45 degree angle, when you scrub this or when you wash it, it'll go fluffy. It doesn't actually kind of throw um, threads about all over the place. And we're going to do three together. So I'm going to go for the red one in the middle and the white one on the top. And all I'm going to do is sew straight down the centre of all those three. Now, if you've got a glue stick, that may help. Um, but don't put very much on, because you don't want to be trying to kind of fluff it up. So we'll just do a little bit and go all the way around the edge. And putting this on in, in curves as well. Um, don't make the curves too small. You'll find it easier when you've got... Um, uh, larger projects. So let's go around that. I'm not too worried. This is going to bunch up a little bit because I'm, I'm pushing it a bit with the, the size of the heart, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's just go around there. Because again, this is going to go all fluffy when I, when I scrub it anyway. 
that. And then we'll do a red one on top of that. Again, just try and get the glue right down the centre. You don't have to glue, you can just go straight for sewing it if you prefer. Just happen to have a glue stick here, so I thought may as well use it. Whoops, didn't stick too well there, did it? Oh, now I'm getting covered in glue now. Look. And there, okay. Might have been easier just to sew it, to be honest. Um, so that's going over the top. And just make a nice V there. And then the white one on the top of that. I think I'll just sew that one. Always put your lids on those, they don't half dry out. Um, need to, to get them drawn up, Megan, so hopefully by the weekend we have to um, get them designed digitally to put them on. So it's taken a little while, but they will be there soon, hopefully. Right, then we're just going to sew straight down the centre. And there you go. So I can do quite a long stitch, so I'm going to go two point, well we'll do two point six on this one. And just keep lining them up. And then try and keep that nice curve shape. But that doesn't matter too much. So you could sew all three ribbons together first may make it a little bit easier when it comes to sewing it on. It just means that you get two stitch lines down the centre, that's all. And although it's cut on the bias, so you've got a certain amount of stretch, try not to stretch it too much. Because that'll draw the fabric up. I have got some basal foam on the back of this one. Um, and I thought it might be quite nice to sew into the foam. So again, just I'm just going to undo that, it's going to be tight. Line up the edges, sew around there. I did make a, a heart applique, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? A heart applique cushion in one of my books using this um, technique around the edge of some applique and that looked really nice. It's all in pale blues, I think it was in Half Yard Home. Okay, then just down to the bottom. Um, fabric hook padded. I've put some bow. Oh, <laughs> I put some bosal on the back of it. I've just sewn that to that look. You silly devil. Never mind. Ignore that. Uh, let's chop that off there. <laughs> it, it looks extra padded, Rita. Now, actually, I'm not showing you the back again. That's what happens when you've got mind on other things when I'm trying to sew. Well, I did that the other day, didn't I? I just stuck something to the back of it. Honestly, things you do. Um, then I'm going to take the scrubbing brush. So it doesn't look too impressive at the moment. But then we're going to do this and fluff it all up. And again, you can be quite aggressive, just like we were on the, on the previous one. Because we really want it to fluff. So um, I think this is a suede brush, but it's actually got um, wire in the middle of it. So it's, it's quite, quite a tough brush. <laughs> I did use both, so yes. I also happened to use a mug mat. I just thought it would add an extra little bit of, um, of padding to the back of it. So I can pretend that was deliberate, maybe. Uh, what am I using for the... Oh no, you saw the back. I know, I know. But it's about the technique, not about the project, because obviously I would not be able to make anything when I've got a mug mat stuck to the back of my heart. Honestly. But at least you're still watching her. <laughs> so let's just go around the top here. I'm going to trim into that bit that I folded at the top as well, just so I can get a bit of 
fluffage going on at the ends. So let's snip that into a point. It's a nice bit of messy crafting, actually, isn't it? And I've used around the heart um, a very pale pink and then a red and then a white on the top. And it's um, made the red really stand out. You can really see the stripes in it there. A Valentine card for Gary. Do you think he'd appreciate that? <laughs> If you can see from there the way it's it's kind of really fluffing up. It's loads of fun. It's an easier technique than um, the fabric cutting version. So I mean it's the same idea, cut on the bias and then scrubbed and brushed until it all fl fluffs up. But it's a, a little bit easier on your hands when you're doing it this way. But again, it does have to be cut on the bias, not on the straight of grain, because it, it doesn't have a nice finish. It doesn't go fluffy if you cut it on the straight. Um, Sophie did the same thing today, quilted both sides of oven gloves together. <laughs> oh, come on, what, what, have you what, what have you done where you look down at it and you think, well, that was a silly thing to do, wasn't it? Sewing-wise, that is. <laughs> Because um, I, I cannot be the only one. So Michelle, I'm not making anything today. I, I may have to do a video on how to do this properly without the mug mat on the back. And we were saying the other day, weren't we, how many times you, you make something and maybe get something wrong and then you go back and you make it again and you do the same mistake. Do that a lot. Uh, Chris Anne chopped off at the end of a zip pull. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that one before as well. Oh, hi, Nancy. Very cold in Colorado, but a good day for sewing. Going to try and finish the new Maddie in an outfit today. Fabulous. Um, you've got a Maddie panel on its way. Oh, Janet's going. See you Saturday. Um, what am I using for what? To fluff it up, Tracy, is a, I think it's a suede brush. I'm not sure. It's just a, a scrubbing brush with a bit of wire in the middle of it. <laughs> That's all right, Denise. I love doing these lives. I'm, I'm glad you're there. I'm glad you appreciate it, even when things don't go quite according to plan. Um, the bag over my left shoulder. This one, the tree bag, um, was actually a kit that we did for Crate and Craft. We do have the tree panels in stock, and we are looking to put that as, um, as a download on the website at some point. Carol says, in 50 plus years of sewing, you name it, I've done it. What would I do without my quick and pick? <laughs> um, so at the back, Christmas, I was making a hanging toilet bag and sewed the pocket on the flap upside down. Done that one as well, particularly with the linings in bags. We've got a patch pocket in the lining and then, yeah, I've done that, sewn that one upside down several times. Um, hello, Wanda. It's snowing in Etters in PA. Where's PA? I don't know where PA is. I shouldn't know where PA is, shouldn't I? It's the shape of the bag. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and let us, uh, get it as a download. Again, it just needs... At the moment, if we put anything that we have as patterns... <coughs> oh, gosh, excuse me. As downloads. Um, they need to be A4 to download them, and our patterns tend to be A5, so we have to have them redesigned so that they're downloadable. Oh, Philadelphia. Of course it is. Oh, Megan sewed through a nail and a finger once. <coughs> Excuse me. And was on antibiotics for a week and a massive bandage on my finger. Oh. So the side pockets. See, I'm not, I'm not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me. Pennsylvania, says Wanda. <coughs> I'm just going to switch the sound off a second. That was a big cough. Apple juice. Oh, that's better. Um, oh, yes, a very big cough. Um, Piers, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Um, Monty Pope had a 12 and a half inch square ruler turned the wrong way and half my squares were wrong. They were an inch bigger and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> uh, 
and sewn a zip upside down so the pull was inside the bag. <laughs> I'm sure I've done that live, you know. <laughs> Everything is a learning curve for me, plenty of mistakes. Well, that's where you learn, isn't it, Tracy? <laughs> Not done that before, though. So two complete projects sewn together. <laughs> Never mind. Um, did the same thing on a wallet. Thanks a million for, mac for mac macrame fabric. Macrame fabric. I don't know what that is. What's macrame fabric? Um, Leslie made two bags that clip back to back following a poor pattern. Put the zips in beautifully and when I clip them together the zips are facing the opposite ways and they all had tails. Um, put Cookie's head on. Oh, do you know, Helen, I did that when I was, when I was making him for the first time. Um, I sewed his head on because I, I, I knew the shape of it and everything and I sewed it on. I thought, I wonder why his, like, his nose is pointing right up in the air like that. So yeah, he's so sewn it the wrong way around. Right, Thankfully you didn't see that. That wasn't on the video. That was as I was designing him. <clears throat> Being brand new is sewing what foot is best to use. What well, depends what you're sewing, Krista. I use a standard foot on my sewing machine for most projects. Um, I'll use a zipper foot occasionally and I'll use a walking foot if I'm doing a lot of quilting, but there's so many feet out there. Depends what, um, what kind of project you have. Just arrived after sitting in the pool in Fiji Ventura. Oh, Jill. Oh, wish I was there. The linings of my bugs are too bulky, too much fabric. Always a good idea to kind of um, predict a text that should have been... <laughs> the cream fabric. Oh, good. <laughs> I thought you'd discovered something new. I've never heard of macrame fabric. We must get some on the website. <laughs> um, the coasters and the scissor holder you shall show. Oh, just a standard foot. No, not whatever's on your sewing machine when you first buy it. So no, nothing special needed for those. Um, this isn't ribbon, Ali. It was f just cotton fabric. Just cut on the bias, 45 degree cotton fabric. So it does just take quite a lot because you're cutting on the diagonal. Um, don't use ribbon because it won't fray on the edges, but you could use bias binding if you have some bias binding. I cut it down a bit though, so if you've got one inch wide bias binding, I'd cut it in half lengthways because it would be two inches wide when you open it up, if that makes sense. Quarter inch foot, yes. Um, th uh, do you know, th the quarter inch foot on this machine has um, the the, the blade thing on the bottom and I don't, don't like that so I don't actually use it on there. Um, it's raining quite heavily. Hmm. Okay I think I'm going to jolly well pop off. Um, Lisa never came along did she? Unless you've got any questions while I'm here. Normally here for an hour but that was a rather quick one. Sloth Multimat is amazing. Yes, I, I, I do like those. My, I, I use one of the little ones mainly. Um, sewn up turning gaps, load. Yep, done that as well. My first bearer had his head on the wrong way and he looked a bit like a lamb. Oh, does there happen to be a video of the video of the quilt, Dorothy? I just made one just before I came live here. So yes, there will be. I need to edit it. It's too late to get it over to the girls tonight because they knock off at five o'clock. Um, so hopefully, um, yes, it's so long, isn't it, Jill? Four o'clock on Saturday, yes. Um, so the, hopefully it'll be up there tomorrow, Dorothy. It'll be on the Half Yard Sewing Club website, probably under the blog. I don't know where they'll put it. They'll either put it in the blog or they'll put it on the homepage, not sure. My beauty regime. I don't really have one, Catherine. Um, I use a, um, a, what do they call it? A cleansing water. I do use a rather expensive rose water toner, which is, which is beautiful, which I got from Space NK. I can't remember the name of it. And my moisturiser, I can't even remember what it's called. I'm a bit rubbish at skincare, to be honest. Um, I went to Space NK, because there's one on the high street, and just said, I've got old wrinkly dry skin. Can you give me something? I only want one pot of cream. I can't, can't be doing with um, eye cream, lip balms, and um, serums, and all that kind of thing. I just wanted some cream. So they gave me one, but I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, that's that's it. Maybe, maybe I should pay a bit more attention. Um, if 
Space Lost and Muddy Panels gone. We'll be getting more in. Yes, Helen, they're coming in tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Peggy Sue says, I wake up like that. I, I, I actually wake up, Peggy, with a bright red nose. That's the, um, I, I hate wearing makeup, but um, it, it does disguise a bright red nose. I never used to have a bright red nose. And um, age spots. Getting those as well. Mm. Not a fan. But there you go. Hope to see you Saturday. Okay, see you then, Tracy. Yes, four o'clock on Saturday. And on Facebook, it'll be on the Half Yard Club Facebook page. And what do I have coming out next? Book wise, um, will be. We're, we're redoing Half Yard Heaven because it's coming up for 100,000 sales. Um, so it's having a, a, a makeover and it's going to have some new projects in it. I think I might be doing five or six new projects for that one, but I'm not sure when that's coming out. They, they need everything from me by April, so it might not be late till later on in the year. My gnome book is coming out, it says on Amazon the 31st of August. I thought it was October, so that's probably going to be the next one published. And it's called So Gnomes. And it's available to pre-order on Amazon. And I don't know if you watched it the other day, Megan. It just it made me it made me laugh out loud when um, when you go to any books on Amazon, and you scroll down past the description and everything. Um, it'll give you the the ratings, like the the chart ratings, the top of the pops, if you like, on Amazon. And that one was number seven hundred and something in uh, biographies of scientists. No idea why. Oh, happy birthday for Sunday, Megan. She's going to be 15. Um, Saturday, Chrissy, is going to be... Th this week's gone... This, this life has gone so quickly. Um, I didn't realise it was this Saturday. It is... Will you please put feet in the bottom of a small bag of one of these days? Put feet in the bottom of a small bag one of these days. Will I please put feet in the bottom? Oh! oh I'm thinking sewing machine feet. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Chris Ann. I was thinking, well, why are we not sewing machine feet? Yes, we can do that. Um, it is on Saturday a a little bag with a flap over. It's about that big, and it's got a flap going over the top with a button and um, an elastic bungee around it. But it was a technique that I used on a clutch bag ages ago. It's quite interesting because you kind of fold the bottom up and sew it and it, you turn it out and it's all, it all turns out nice. Um, so I've made it kind of a long slim one because I'm thinking maybe sunglasses or your glasses or a mobile phone or cell phone or something like that. I know you've said this before, does the quilters go binding come in the box? Yes, it's all part of the, the grey fabric. There's two metres of the dark grey fabric in there and that's enough for the binding as well. The binding's not cut on the bias. It doesn't need to be when it's on a straight line. It only needs to be cut on the bias if you're going around a curve. Um, cat bed. Oh yes. Oh, it's talking to Mandy. 4 p.m. It's 4 p.m. Oh, Martin's going to be 70 tomorrow. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Martin. Um, yeah, I did sew at that age, you know, Marion. But I thought everybody did. It was. It, it was. I wouldn't even say it was a hobby. If I wanted something new to wear or anything, you just just made it. It's just just what you did. Um, show the chenilling up close to camera. Of course I can. There you go. Not showing you the back. But yeah. The more the more you scrub it, the more it gets fluffy, and then you can see from the side. It just it fluffs up very nicely. It's a nice effect, isn't it? Tell you what would look nice doing it in um, in straight lines. We did with the um, the mug mat um, in diagonal lines. That was a different technique last week, but just in straight lines, maybe crossing over each other would look quite abstract. Look like I'm voguing. Use a high factor sunscreen every day without fail since June 1995, and on the back of my hands, no age no age spots. Ooh. And in early 60s, I don't know if it has helped out or just lucky, but grateful either way. Maybe should have done that. Um, 4 p.m. So, yep, yeah, thank you, Megan. Saturday at 4 is going to be a permanent time. For the Half Yard Club, Maxine. So only once a month. The other three weeks are going to be at the regular 11 o'clock time. It's just the Half Yard Club one. And I, I know... Um, 
It doesn't do anybody in Australia any favours, but we've got so many members in the States that can't watch the 11 o'clock because it's just too early in the morning. So we thought just for them, um, we'd try it at four o'clock just to see if more people can actually actually join us. So so that's that's why we're doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just for you, Ritu, change it to four o'clock just for you. But every other Saturday on, on my Facebook will be at the regular 11 o'clock time. It's, it's just that one. Um, you'll have good use of your rum picker to get your rug mat, but I know Laura, then I'll have to start this all over again, won't I? Um, Saturday is the same club all day, so we'll work well at four o'clock. Oh, jolly good. 4 p.m. Wednesday, let's say 4 p.m. As I said, that's it, Megan. If you have a look on, um, I should put it on my website as well, actually, on the Half Yard Club Facebook page, they put um, a list of times of and where I'm going and what I'm doing and that kind of thing. So if you have a look on there. That was three, Jean. I wouldn't do more than four, I don't think. But I don't know, maybe five. Don't try it. But I think, I think three works quite well. Um, hello, Jack. You just got here unusually live on a train. I'll watch the beginning later. Um, 4 p.m. is cooking tea time. We don't have a cooking tea time. We just tend to eat when we're hungry. Something that uses an internal metal snap closure. What's an internal? Well, like a, a magnetic, one of the round ones, but inside, or one of those that is actually in between the lining and the outer, because I haven't got any of those. Um, I can see if I can get some. Sound club is small, but going to take your books along for ideas for everyone. Thank you, Sandra. You can never join on Saturday because it's 3 a.m. here when you're live. Now I can join in. Lovely. Yeah, so that'll be this Saturday for, I must remember that. You know what, it'll happen. I'm going to go live at 11, aren't I? I'm going to be sitting here wondering where you all are. Um, oh, thank you, Alexandria. Could we have a session on how to work out material sizes for pouches according to the size of the item you want it to fit? Gaping frog like. Ch kiss snap. A kiss snap. I'll Google it, Jan. I can't, I can't, so unless you've got a picture. Send me a picture, I'll have a look. I'm going to make my son in law and getting too big headed after BBC. <laughs> yeah, maybe start sewing some big hats, Sophie, for the big head. Um, yeah, Steph, I, if, I'm, if I make something, I'll. I'll try and make sure, as Laura says, she'll still be here at 11. Going to hang around all day for me. Um, I'll make sure as I explain how I've worked it out, if, if that'll help when we do projects. Maybe that's something I should in incorporate into it. Um, don't have dinner till six or seven. Sometimes we don't have dinner. Mind you, Gary does love to cook and he's very good. We had a vegetarian bolognese last night, which was with carrots in it. Everything. It's lovely. Um, anyway, I have a video to edit, so I shall go and get on with that. Uh, a glasses case or pouch. Okay, well that's c the kind of thing that I'm going to do on Saturday, so join me on Saturday at four o'clock and I'll, I'll try and explain how I came up with that one. Yeah, so the ones where you squeeze them, Bonnie, and they like, who's a gaping frog? Jam, so it's that shape, and then they, they snap shit. One of those, right. Oh, we could do that. I need to get hold of one, though. I don't actually have any of those. Um, mine's hand sewing. Hello, Blodwin. Just got in from Manchester. Just go in now. Um, that's all right, Catherine. <laughs> If there's any other techniques that you fancy, I might put a post on Facebook again. Um, then just let me know. So when Wednesdays, we decided we're just going to do a technique of some sort, and then Saturday we'll make a project. So maybe sometimes we'll use that technique to make the project on the Saturday as well. So that was um, that was just quite a, a quick one, but I thought you might like that. I thought that was quite fun. Did we did post what materials we needed so long. I did, and. I w if you're a subscriber on my YouTube channel, then I will send out a message to everybody. They don't always go go through. Um, 
but I will try. 11 a.m. swirls a Saturday, so we'll be pleased on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Good. A pillowcase. I haven't made a pillowcase for a long time. We could have a look at that. Okay, right. So let me just check over here that that's all up to date. Watching on silent while in a meeting, I'll catch it, but it looked great. <laughs> yeah, just skip the bit where you saw the back, okay? Just don't, you don't need to see that again. Just skip over that bit. Um, cutting fabric so not to waste when cutting patterns. That's a good idea. A lot of patterns that will, will have that information on the packaging. But yes, we can do that. I want to make a memory cushion for my cousin. Oh, that's a nice idea, Ali. I never get the messages sent to me on YouTube with no subscriber notification. But I can see them on the com community tab on YouTube. Oh, OK. I should put them on there. Well, but I'd better do that, hadn't I? Because it's only Saturday. Put your materials list if you want to come and have a sew along. That's going to be the idea on Saturday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I will be on the same place on YouTube, but on um, Facebook, it will be over on the Half Yard Sewing Club Facebook page. But I'll, I'll put that on the message as well. OK, bye, Daryl. We'll catch up then. Yes, can always get a flight out to Florida. I'd love to get a flight out to Florida. Um, I miss Saturday at work till 5. Oh, never mind, Debbie. You'll maybe catch up later on if it's something that you wanted to see. Um, going back to making Maddie's clothes. Poor girl is hiding behind my sofa. <laughs> a naked Maddie behind your book. No, that's, that's a pleasure, chris -Anne. OK, I shall see you again Saturday at 4 o'clock, so do enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.